Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're building a deck around Reaper's Talisman. The one mana artifact equipment from Forgotten Realms equips for two mana, and whenever the equipped creature attacks, it gains a death touch until end of turn. And whenever the equipped creature attacks alone, the opponent loses two life and we gain two life. So Reaper's Talisman is an individually powerful equipment, and it also combines very nicely alongside First Strike and Double Strike creatures, because if our First Strike creature also has Death Touch, and the opponent tries to block it with their creature, we can take it out in First Strike damage thanks to Death Touch, and our creature will stay unharmed, so it's very difficult for the opponent to deal with. And then we've got a full playset of Spare Dagger in the deck as well, a 1 mana equipment that equips for just 1 mana, giving the equipped creature plus 1 plus so, and whenever this creature attacks we may sacrifice Spare Dagger, and if we do, the creature deals 1 damage to any target. So it's very important here that it's the creature dealing 1 damage and not the Spare Dagger itself, because that means that if our creature has Death Touch and it deals 1 damage, it can take out any opposing creature no matter how large it is. So that's another neat combo with our Reaper's Talisman. And then both of these 1 mana equipments also play nicely with our Rune package. We've got a bunch of different runes in the different colors, as well as our Runeforge Champion to search them up and a Runed Crown. So those all play nicely with our equipment as well. So let's take a look at one of those runes. Rune of Sustenance, we're playing one copy, an enchantment or a rune that can enchant any permanent that includes our creatures or equipment and even our lands if we don't have any better targets, just so we can play the rune and draw a card when it enters a battlefield. And as long as the enchanted permanent is a creature, it has lifelink. And if it's an equipment, then the equipped creature will have lifelink. So it plays very well alongside Talisman and Spare Dagger. Then we also have a one-off copy of Rune of Mortality, which is similar to the Rune of Sustenance, giving Death Touch instead of Lifelink. And finally, the full playset of Rune of Might, which gives Trample as well as a plus one plus one bonus. And Trample also combines very nicely with Death Touch, because that means we only need to assign one damage to each creature blocking our Trample Death Touch creature, and the rest can Trample over to the opponent. Also makes it much easier to kill multiple creatures if the opponent tries to double or triple block, and it's going to be a complete nightmare for the opponent if we also have First Strike, so it just makes it impossible for the opponent to block any of our creatures. Then we have the full playset of a Runeforge Champion, a 3 mana 2 3 Dwarf Warrior. Warrior, an important creature type that we'll get back to in a second. And when a champion enters a battlefield, we may search our library and or graveyard for a rune card, reveal it and put it into our hand. And then we can play our rune cards for just one mana rather than having to pay their regular mana cost. So it makes it easier to deploy our runes. And because our runes draw a card when they enter the battlefield, a Runeforge Champion is typically going to be a nice 2 for 1. And that's also the reason why we only have a singleton copy of Rune of Sustenance and Rune of Mortality, because with our four copies of Champion we can still find them if we really need that effect. And then we've got two copies of a Runed Crown, a three mana artifact equipment that equips for two mana, giving plus one plus one. And when the Rune Crown enters the battlefield, we may search for library, hand, and or graveyard for a Rune card and put it onto the battlefield attached to Rune Crown. And then of course we get to draw the card from the Rune as well. So once again we have the choice between Death Touch, Lifelink, and the plus one plus one and Trample. So that gives us added flexibility and added access to Rune of Mortality and Rune of Sustenance. Then taking a look at some of the creatures in the deck, we've got the full playset of Core Blademaster, a 1-1 Core Warrior with a double strike, saying equipped warriors we control have double strike. And that's where the creature type from Runeforge Champion also comes in handy, because it does get double strike with the Blademaster in play as long as it's equipped. And then, of course, a double strike plays very nicely with Death Touch and with some of our other cards in the deck like our Thunderous Orator, a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, Core Wizard with Vigilance, and when the Orator attacks, it gains Flying until end of turn if we control a creature with Flying, and the same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, and Trample, and we've got a ton of keywords throughout the deck, including Death Touch, Lifelink, First Strike, Double Strike, even Flying from our Silver Quill at 5 mana, so the Orator is perfect for this deck. And then we also have the full playset of Triumphant Adventure. Even though we don't have a major venture theme throughout the deck, it's just a 1-1 with Death Touch. And as long as it's our turn, the Triumphant Adventure has First Strike. And when it attacks, we get to venture into the dungeon, which can give us a small upside as well, choosing one of the three different dungeons and get their various benefits. 
And then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Binding the Old Gods as a powerful removal spell, destroying targets and non-land permanent and opponent controls when it enters battlefield, get to ramp by searching a forest on chapter 2, and on the third chapter our creatures gain death touch until end of turn, which is also quite relevant in this deck. And then topping off our curve we have two copies of Shadrix Silver Quill, a 2-5 legendary elder dragon with flying and double strike, and at the beginning of combat on our turn we may choose two modes, and each mode has to target a different player. Those modes include target player creates a 2-1 inkling token, target player draws a card and loses one life, and finally target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. So it's always very interesting to decide the right modes, and sometimes if the opponent doesn't have any creatures in play we can simply target them with the plus one plus one counter mode, and then we get to have the benefit of the inkling or drawing a card at the cost of one life without any drawbacks, but most of the time it's going to be a very tricky decision and uh, can lead to some interesting choices throughout the games. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got a few creature lands with two copies of Cave of the Frost Dragon, which can also help give the Orator flying, as well as two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which can also give Orator menace. And then we've got three basic plains, two basic swamps, three basic forests, which are important for the Binding the Old Gods, and then all 12 pathways in the Amps and Colors. So the entire deck is rotation proof. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Can decide between Orator first or Adventure first. Probably better to Adventure first. That way we get to maybe venture a bit more. Although Orator first gets in a little bit more damage. Opponent's red green. And the Royal Eruption takes out the Adventure, that's fine. Play Orator. Pass it back. Ideally we can save the runes to put on an equipment instead of the Orator itself. So kind of hoping for a nice target that we can take out with binding, so we can postpone having to play the runes. Kazandu Mammoth is a fine target. And there's a core Blade Master, so could also go for Blade Master plus Rune of Mortality to have profitable attacks. Is that better? Opponent could play like a 5 mana dragon next turn that I'm maybe better off saving the binding for. And then Rune of Sustenance can help us maybe win the race. Yeah, I don't hate that. So, play Blade Master and play Rune of Mortality. Opponent takes four. Now with Runeforge Champion we can maybe play Champion and two runes next turn as opposed to Binding. Scale the heights. And that's it, so opponent's missing land drops which is kind of painful for a landfall deck. Well, probably don't have to Binding. Search for library, get a rune of mites, and then I can put the rune on the blade master to diversify. Although it's not going to be able to attack into the mammoth all that profitably, so maybe this turn I just play another orator and kind of wait it out. And then next turn I'll commit. The remaining runes. It's also more mana efficient to play Binding and a one mana rune thanks to the champion. If something big and scary does show up. Not just a brush fire. And a royal eruption takes out Orator. At least we didn't put all our eggs in one basket. 
So what's next? Don't have Death Touch anymore until we find another champion to grab that rune out of the graveyard. So I'm kind of liking play a rune for one mana and we can put it on the Blade Master and then just binding the Kazandu Mammoth and I can add a rune of sustenance on top and to keep diversifying maybe put it on the Runeforge champion although putting it on the Blade Master would gain the most life but I kind of like uh, splitting up my runes a little bit So all can attack into the Hellhound. Orator has Double Strike, Lifelink, Trample, and Vigilance. Bone falls to four. And we have a Cave of the Frost Dragon that can also help us cross the finish line. Opponent finally gets to five mana. It's going to be a Vastwood Surge for a bunch of Landfall Triggers. Don't think this is going to be lethal. And we can always chum block with the orator if needed for single green. There shouldn't be any risks and our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. I guess we're missing black mana. Making it a little bit less fine than initially uh, suspected. Hmm. Yeah, without black mana... I'm not doing much in the early turns, so it's probably Mulligan actually. Talisman into Adventure, into probably Rune Crown, just bottom the Rune of Sustenance. Only have the one creature, so hopefully it doesn't get removed. Ah, backup Adventure is nice. Alright, we'll get in and play another adventure, I think. Opponent can absorb one damage, but they can prevent us from venturing. And yeah, I don't mind Tomb of Annihilation here. Worthy Aggressor, getting a replacement Death Touch token once we complete it in case the adventure dies is nice too. And then next turn, we can play the Rune Crown, probably getting Rune of Might. And then play Cave afterwards, unless we draw into a relevant one mana play. Yeah, can't play that one. Alright, double venture. Could have also opted for the Oubliette, but it's pretty painful to have to sacrifice a creature and an artifact. Opponent is blue-green, so it might be the blue-green ramp deck. And finally time to suit up the adventurers, I guess. Can equip Crown, equip Talisman, and then I'm giving up a Venture trigger for two extra damage from the Talisman. It's probably worth it. And we still get to make our 4 4 token. Alright, we've got a nice Death Touch army going here. Cultivator maybe gets double blue. And the Foretold card could be an Alrun's Epiphany to give the opponents an extra turn. So 
So what's the play here? I could move all the equipment onto the 4-4. Or I can just suit up the adventure with more stuff. And then go through the same dungeon to make them lose one life. So I would drain them for five. It's not quite lethal. I think I just activate Cave of the Frost Dragon and attack with the team. We lose out on the Talisman trigger. But I think this is going to be better overall. And then I'm kind of happy going for Tomb of Annihilation again to force maybe a discard or more life loss. Opponent discarding a divide by zero. That's good value. And opponent's just jumping here. Only need to deal one damage because of Trample and Death Touch. Rest tramples over. So there's the Epiphany we suspected. But uh, yeah, they'll need a follow up because Epiphany by itself isn't enough. Alright, Cyclone Summoner. They probably wanted to attack with the birds first. And our opponent explodes. They would have just died to our cave, hitting them for three. And the talisman also excellent for dealing those last points of damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn two, probably going to lead with... It's either Adventure or Orator against Red Green. Let's go with the Adventure and start venturing a turn sooner. And if this eats a removal spell, I'm not too sad. It's going to be a Prosperous Innkeeper. Talisman could be fun. And then... Probably gonna go with Tomb of Annihilation here. Be nice and aggressive. Scry 1 would have been better if I had played Runeforge Champion pre combats. And then. Which rune do I get? Red Green, opponent has an Innkeeper trying to play something big. Already have Death Touch. Probably don't need Lifelink just yet. Go for the Rune of Might. Another Innkeeper. They could double block my adventure, although now Spare Dagger could uh, prevent that from happening. I think I'm okay if they double block my adventure at this point. Still have Talisman to provide Death Touch. And then probably play Orator plus Spare Dagger. Opponent just takes it. Could have still played the rune just for one mana to cantrip, maybe try and hit our land drop. Although if I can wait to maybe put it on the Blade Master, that'll work out better. Goldspan Dragon's powerful card, although I can take it out with my spare dagger next turn. Zvella. Okay, land is good. So I can play Blade Master and maybe Rune and then still equip my Spare Dagger. Kind of want to put the Rune on the Blade Master here. Although that means not getting any benefit from it this turn. Yeah, I guess we'll go with uh, Orator then. 
Maybe going to all in on one creature. Take out Goldspain. Opponent doesn't even get any treasure. And we've got a double striking, trampling, death touching orator. Take out an innkeeper. Alright, so if orator survives, we're in good shape. A bard class explains all those legendaries. Although I guess they haven't played a ton of them yet. Maybe just sandbagging some of them. There's Magda. Your opponent does have a lot of non-legendaries for a Bard class deck. Okay. Well, Reaper's Talisman looks decent. Although, yeah, might be better off just attacking with everyone so we can venture again and uh, complete our dungeon, create a 4-4 death touch token, and our opponent's in trouble. Being a red-green creature deck without much removal, they're just never going to be able to block our death touch, first strike, double strike, and what have you, creatures. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Orator into Blademaster, probably. And then we're hoping to pick up maybe a Runeforge champion, some of our equipment. Let's see what the opponent is up to here. Turn one Swamp, turn two Forests, and an Elderfang Disciple. Got a few spare lands that I don't mind getting rid of. Okay, could go for Adventure as well. Yeah, I don't mind that. If it absorbs a removal spell, I'm not too upset. Another Disciple. So interestingly, if they stay back with both Disciples, they could double block the Adventure and kill it, in which case keeping the Rune of Might would be useful. Although that's kind of going all in on the adventure. So maybe I just discard my land, although typically against discard decks I like hitting my land drops so we can play whatever we top deck. So maybe discard Blade Master. Sure. And then Orator can still gain first strike from the adventure, which is enough to get past any blockers. Alright, opponent attacks, so they're not planning on blocking. Nope. Opponent is staying back, so... Could put the Rune of Might on the adventure and still attack. Or I can play the Orator and then just pass for now. Kind of like the Rune of Might play. And then... Let's go with the Lost Mine. Blade Master on top. It's not a bad draw. Let's me double spell for the next two turns, essentially. Opponent chumps. Not sure why. Maybe they've got ways of bringing back the Disciple from the graveyard. Village rights the other disciple. Maybe they're setting up a sweeper here. Which makes me hesitant to play two creatures out here. So maybe I just stick to a single orator. And then make a treasure. Could also make a goblin do nothing. That feels like it's maybe a bit too afraid of a sweeper. So let's go orator, attack, make a treasure, and not overextend. And then I'll hang on to the rune of sustenance as more discard fodder potentially.
Get to attack, make a treasure. And pass it back. So we'll see if they have a crippling fear here. Nope, just an eye twitch. Alright, so still can't really explain the block from the Disciple a couple turns ago. Attack. And then we'll drain the opponents. Orator with Double Strike, Death Touch, and Trample. Opponent learning for Sciences, so maybe they were just missing Double Black for Crippling Fear. Which does make sense. So then now I'm asking myself the question, do I hold the Orator and hope they don't top deck a Swamp? Because I can probably kill them next turn. Yeah, let's go for it. Alright, there's a Sciences. And a hunt for specimens. I don't think that's gonna save them, but we'll see. Runeforge champion can get an extra rune to give Blademaster Trample. And so we'll attack with the team. Opponent goes to 7. Yeah, I guess they do survive, but if I draw land, they still die to my cave. So I'm expecting a Crippling Fear next turn. But an uh, untapped land of the top will win the game. Uh, just a Calling Ritual could actually be better for them. Should have sacked my Treasury in response, of course. So, it's going to be an Acquisitions Experts. Can have my Sussans. Well, opponent is at one. A single attack from Talisman will kill him. And if the cave gets to connect, that's also lethal. Another lethal threat with Hive. Yeah, the rune enchantment's also quite fun with the creature lands, since usually auras fall off creature lands, but not when it can enchant any permanents. One's gonna flunk and experts. But that should leave them dead to my creature land. Hive of the Eye Tyrants gonna cross the finish line here. Or how about Silver Quill to deal the last point instead in style? So you lose one life, I get an inkling. So yeah, it was a bit of a weird game with the opponent missing their land drops and we suspected them having a sweeper. Turns out it was a ritual and not a crippling fear, which yeah, they would have been able to cast with any land of the top, not just swamp specifically, so pretty happy that uh, it took them an extra turn to cast it, otherwise we could have been in major trouble. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with uh, keepable hands. Turn one talisman. Turn two. Forced to play orator since I won't have the green mana to play rune of might on it. Up against the blue reds. So they could have quite a bit of removal. Looks like a giant tribal deck. So, kick things off with Orator. And then we don't want to overextend into a battle of Frost and Fire. Finding Spare Dagger would also be useful to take out any Calamity Bearers that the opponent plays. Quakebringer can also prevent us from gaining life. And which is relevant. Just gonna equip and hit for two. Which is actually four. Alright, she's gonna be a Shatter Skull Charger, plus a one mana glimpse. Could play Blade Master, give Orator a double strike. Although the DOS play into the sweeper we mentioned. At least Rune of Might on the equipment mitigates playing into the sweeper somewhat. So we'll start there. Alright, fine, we'll play the Blade Master. And then this doesn't matter in this case. Sometimes you gotta be careful with how to stack the triggers, especially if spare daggers involved. Wanna make sure to have Death Touch before sacrificing the dagger. Yep, there's the Battle of Frost and Fire, as we expected, but we still have a Reaper Talisman with a rune on it. And I have to decide between Silver Quill or Binding. Probably go for Silver Quill. And then might want to make an inkling to give myself more board presence. Or I could put a counter on Silver Quill. Still dies to Stomp, which deals six damage. So I think making an inkling and then either the opponent draws a card and loses one or they get a plus one counter. Um, close call. We'll be able to kill him with Silver Quill if they can't answer it regardless. So probably fine giving them a plus one counter. Although then if they play Calamity Bearer this would deal 12 damage. Yeah, we'll go with a lose one, draw one. I hope that made sense. And then... Hopefully next turn we can cross the finish line with Silver Quill. There's Calamity Bearer and a Squash Wow. So they had both. So Charger deals 10. Yeah, I guess we'll take it. And a Spare Dagger. Is that going to make the difference? So Talisman puts us to 3, 4, 5, 6. Still 1 damage short. But we can use a Spare Dagger to kill an opposing creature. Problem is we still die on the way back. So one point short. That's unfortunate. Three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna have to binding the charger and jump with the inkling. And then I can still play an orator. Which can maybe get there. Yeah, I think that's it. Could also attack and then jump with Orator, and then next turn the Inkling gets there. That probably makes more sense. 
some debt to removal, obviously. But this, I think, gives us the best chance. Crush the weak. Yeah, that'll do it. Unfortunately, we didn't have the mana to play the Binding and play and equip the Dagger to attack and take out both creatures. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Reaper's Talisman good in multiples. Now we could actually wait on playing the Blade Master until we can equip it with a Rune Crown so it doesn't die to a cheap burn spell, for instance. Although against turn 1 Sentinel, it's probably okay to run it out. Next turn we have a couple options. We can equip play another Talisman. Yeah, don't hate that. And drain for two. Next turn. If we draw lands, probably more efficient to equip and play another two drop as opposed to rune crown, but if we don't, rune crown seems fine. Uh, Scute Swarm can get in the way, but that's also where Draining with Talisman can still deal some damage. And Trample from Rune of Might also useful. So, yeah, let's go all in here. Get some Trample. Trample Death Touch also quite nice. Opponent blocks with everyone. Nope. Just takes it. Yes, Cute Swarm can be very effective against creature strategies, but not when Reaper's Talisman is involved. Fall of the Imposter. Okay, that can eventually remove our creature on the third chapter. But we've got backup Blade Masters. So, for now, just Rune Crown. And then, probably get another Rune of Mites. And equip. Opponent will have to chomp. This is not going to end well for them because of the death touch and trample. So 1-1-1-1, one, 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 one. Rust can trample over. Alright, opponent's left with a singleton skew swarm. And they explode. All right. Well, this was a satisfying game to showcase Reaper Stylesman. Doesn't shine in every matchup. Sometimes it can be awkward if you have multiple creatures and it's more beneficial to just attack with everyone. Then the Talisman is a little bit obsolete. So there might be a better home for Reaper's Talisman, but I still wanted to show off all the synergies with the runes, equipment, and all the keywords working in harmony with Death Touch and Double Strike, and then the Spare Dagger, a nice cherry on top. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.